Regret is a wasted energy. If you can change something, you can change it. People talk about looking back over their life and just wondering what happened to it. And I always feel that if you're still breathing, then there's still time for change, that you still have an opportunity. But we do get very lost in the routine of life. Um, we're told that, you know, getting the job, getting the nine to five is important and that's how you build the foundations. And then suddenly you turn around and 20 years later, you wonder what on earth you've done with your life and your youth. <laughs> and I definitely feel like that. I've felt that creeping up on me for quite a while, actually. Let's say 10 years. But it, it can take time to find the energy and the impetus and the inspiration to make enough changes. So I feel like I've been on quite a long reset. I had a plan, or the beginnings of a plan, way back in 2008, which I started to implement, and I've been building on that ever since. So I got out of the nine to five, but that was quite a long time ago. That was 16 years ago now, which is frightening to think that I started to put a plan into place 16 years ago and here I am still doing it. Of course, there are always blips along the way um, and lots of things have happened in that 16 years. I got divorced. I went to university, I moved city, I published a book, I became financially independent from the nine to five, and I also survived a pandemic. And currently we are working our way through a cost of living crisis, an economic crisis, whatever you want to call it, and that can slow things down a bit. So throughout a lot of that 16 years, and particularly at the beginning where I was moving, ending relationships, moving cities, um, and in fact within that 16 years I've moved city twice, I've moved homes numerous times, um, I've started and ended other relationships and have decided that single is definitely the way to go for me. It's better for me all round. Um, but in terms of my main goal being financial independence from a job and being able to be more autonomous about my money and my life, that has taken time. We've had ups and downs. I've had, um, I've had other jobs in between. I've had part-time jobs and I've had short-term contract jobs which have enabled me to bank a little bit of extra money. But I never wanted them to be a permanent thing because I was determined to stay out of that nine to five. So I've had to repair my finances and get back on my feet whilst not having that nine to five job constantly drip feeding in money. And since the pandemic, that has changed. So it was going to be my business, my clothing design business and all the little subsidiaries that come with that and of course 2020 came along and kind of changed all of that and ruined it a bit. There were some temporary up points and we've had some downs and then I've realised that I've just had to change the way I worked because just relying on my business is like going back to the nine to five. I'm going to be a slave to this one thing that brings in my income and that's going to put me right back where I was 16 years ago being dependent on one financial stream of money. And so since 2022, so we're only talking, you know, two to three years ago, I've been working on diversifying my income so I now have all the side hustles. My income is back up now. I'm earning more than I spend every year and that this year is really the first year that I can confidently say that. 
and although I wouldn't say that I am financially completely secure because I am on a low income but I do have low outgoings as well so I've really streamlined my life and I like it that way I don't miss spending lots of money I don't miss luxuries I don't miss holidays I don't miss any of those things I've worked out what I need versus what I want and I'm happy with that so what I need to do now is keep those incomes consistent they are side hustles they do require attention so in some ways I am not autonomous they are not completely passive income streams I'm not earning all my money from savings and investments and um, you know investment drawdowns and things not by a long shot I've only just started a retirement plan so I have 20 years in which to, to build something that looks remotely like a retirement income uh, because at the moment anyway I, I'm, I'm looking at drawing from 70 that may change I might need it sooner if I'm not well I might need it longer in the future than that if I'm still working and still fit and still you know financially independent from needing those income streams one of the other financial things I've been trying to do is repair some of the damage that I've done to my savings over the years I while I was like moving here and trying to work hard on my business I was probably for at least several years dipping into my savings as a regular form of financial top up and I spent quite a lot of the savings that I had built up just living and I probably blew when I look at the amounts now what I've got to put back I need to repair the damage that I've done over the years just living off savings because for various reasons some of it was just I was in denial um, at my lowest financial ebb which was I think 2022 my income only brought in 9,000 which even for me in particular as I was very early in my frugal days then was an impossibility so I was dipping into savings and on and off since I gave up work I have dipped in in small amounts so I've been trying to put back and I'm slowly getting back up but I still have if I wanted to get back to the savings that I had back in when was it I can't even remember when it was let's say 20 uh, 2018 I'd have to put back another 10,000 into my savings which will take a long time to do I don't have that kind of clout and by that I mean all in so that could be money that's sitting in my new stocks and shares ISA it could be money that is going into the pension it could be money that's in other savings so that's across the board that's that's my financial worth that's not just sitting in one particular pot so at the same time as making all these plans and undoing some of the damage that I've done over the years I, I am also in my mind that I want to be worth the money that I was say 10 years ago before I started dipping into my savings regularly as a form of income and it's all very well saying well you, you, you know you shouldn't have lived on that you should have gone and got a job or whatever but as I've said before regret is a wasted emotion it's a wasted energy there's no point in going oh well you should have done that because that's pretty pointless <laughs> it's too late I know what I'm doing I like th I like the direction things are going in and I just need to keep working at it but I feel like the end of this year is when I can say okay I've sorted out my income streams now I have a routine going and because I am doing lots of little income streams that I can do from anywhere I can now move myself around I can do other things because let's say I decided to I don't know go and live in a camper van and travel around the country I could still do most of my income streams from there So this begs the question, what is it I want to do with 2025? 
and I've talked about this before, but it's a, a constant niggle in the back of my mind because I don't know what the plan is. I mean, if I had the money to throw at it, buying and fixing up a camper van and moving into it would be something of a temporary dream. It's something that I would really like to do. I do not have the finances for it. Uh, I do not have the infrastructure for it. So I'm not even going to go there. If an opportunity arises and it's potentially workable, that's fine. But moving into a camper van would mean completely streamlining everything I have. And as you can see from the background here, this is just my creative workshop. This is my spare bedroom. This is that alone. There will be a lot of work to do. However, I don't think I want to stay here in this part of the country. The dream at this point in terms of location would be to move back nearer my parents because I am losing time. I'm losing valuable time. I am not quite sure how to do that because my parents live in one of the most expensive parts of the country and I don't think that I'm going to be able to A, afford it without putting myself back to square one financially and it's also a problem because I am self-employed and because my income is very unsteady um, you know the rental market is quite tough at the moment and I don't know if I don't know if anyone would take me on I don't know that I would pass any of the credit checks to be able to do that getting this place almost seven years ago was tough enough and that was before pandemic times I don't pass the credit checks so they didn't do any credit checks on me I told them I gave them the situation and I just pay all the rent up front so I pay twice a year in six monthly installments but not everywhere will let you do that so there was a place I looked at before I took this one where as soon as they realized that that would be my offer they didn't want to know because they didn't want to take responsibility for holding that amount of money for that length of time so not everyone wants to do it. I know it's become more the norm now and paying huge amounts of rent up front to secure places seems to be the thing. So I'm halfway through 2024 and I've been kind of floating around. I've been looking at my finances. I've been thinking, OK, so things are looking much more predictable now. I have lots of small income streams that mean I have lots of little pots of income that vary. They're all reasonably reliable and if one goes down I don't lose them all. So that gives me a little bit of security there. There are always things going on. There is always money coming in from different places and it's f becoming fairly predictable in that respect. So what happens next year? There needs to be a plan. Now, I will re-sign my tenancy renewal, presuming that goes ahead, in October. And that will tie me till October 2025, which is fine. I don't mind being tied to another year if I know what's happening afterwards, because that gives me time to plan, to build things up to put ideas into into place and it gives me the time to streamline everything. I like to have lots of planning time. For something like this it needs to be very strategic. So maybe I should be starting to think about that now rather than next year. But we are still in a tricky market. Rents are still very high, interest rates are still very high. I still don't have tons of money to throw around so I need to put out my feelers and start investigating. I know people down south, I might find someone who has a rental property or something like that and don't forget as well moving means that I am going to lose some 
of my financial clout. So up here where I am now, I know that I can live on a very tight food budget because the shops around me have really good discounts. The yellow sticker halls are a major part of that. That probably doesn't exist down south. Doesn't mean it doesn't, but it means having to start again and rebuild that structure. So if I don't have that, that means my food bill could potentially quadruple every month. So again, that's something else. All these little things need to be built into the plan. The what's ifs, the buts, the if that isn't there, how does that change? What can I do here instead? But this feels like an exciting possibility because now in recent weeks I've started to feel more motivated and I don't know where that comes from. I don't know if it's just a little bit of a change of mindset. I don't know if it's like a hormonal change because there are all sorts of things that are going on at the moment. I don't know if it's because I feel a little bit more like I know what I'm doing now and things feel a little bit more organised. I don't know whether all my little, you know, doing my little hacks and things like that and getting my self-assessment done for the year and feeling more like a can-do attitude has elevated things a bit. I don't feel as reluctant when I go to my clean jobs, you know, for quite a while I've been thinking, oh God, it's a, another clean routine, this is so boring. And the last couple of weeks I've been like, yep, this is the thing I go out and do, this is good, I get to clean, it's only eight and a half hours a week, I make some money, I get to listen to podcasts. So there's been a general change, and I don't know whether that's got anything to do with my change in eating habits, I'm cutting down all the rubbish I'm eating, maybe there are less chemicals flowing around my body from my food. There are all sorts of things that could possibly be, but I want to embrace that, and while I have that enthusiasm, to make the most of it. So I'm going to put my feelers out and talk to people that I know down south and just see if there is any possibility that this might be a thing next year. Because I feel like I'm, I'm getting ready. I, I don't want to stay here forever. And I feel like that I could, if the right move came up, I'd take it. I have no reason to stay in this area at all. No reason whatsoever. So thoughts. Um, and I like making plans. Ideas. It's exciting.